Hello and welcome to Quick Charge by Electrek. Keeping you in the fast track with daily Tesla and electric vehicle news. I'm Mikey G and it's Thursday, July 21st. Tesla announced that it aims to start 4680 battery cell production at Gigafactory Texas this quarter and quickly ramp up the volume by the end of the year. Aside from the typical earnings and number crunching, much of Tesla's conference call from yesterday actually revolved around the 4680 cell. The automaker confirmed that it is having issues, including its dry electrode technology. Tesla wouldn't confirm its current 4680 production rate, but it did confirm that it's still not enough to produce 1,000 vehicles per week, which is the goal by the end of the year. Drew Baglino, Tesla's senior vice president of powertrain and energy engineering, confirmed that the automaker plans to officially start production at Texas this quarter, meaning that we might actually see them in some Tesla vehicles being delivered at volume by the end of the year. Tesla Energy has achieved a record quarter on many levels, but the company didn't say a whole lot about its problematic solar roof product. Solar deployments increased by 25% year over year in the second quarter, and the best yet in four years, actually. Tesla also had great deployment of its energy storage capacity during the quarter, with 1.133 gigawatt hours deployed. While energy storage deployment was up this quarter, it was down year over year due to supply chain issues. Earlier this month, we reported that an impressive number of megapacks was spotted outside Gigafactory Nevada, seemingly being ready to be shipped out, but Tesla didn't comment on that matter either. Interestingly, they didn't mention anything about the solar roof product at all. We previously reported that the solar roof deployment was extremely low during the quarter, and Tesla stopped scheduling new installations for the U.S. market. This week's Quick Charge is sponsored by Aventon Electric Bikes. Aventon offers premium e-bikes and accessories at a great value. Adventure delivered direct to your front door. Aventon offers a wide range of electric bicycles armed with a powerful e-bike motor that goes up to 28 miles per hour. Aventon's award-winning Pace 500 and 350 set a standard for upright cruiser e-bikes with new upgrades and design features. You can check out their website, aventon.com. That's A-V-E-N-T-O-N.com. Ford has announced that it managed to secure 60 gigawatt hours of battery supply in order to achieve an annual production run rate of 600,000 EVs by the end of next year. The automaker also confirmed a move to lithium iron phosphate cells to help achieve that goal. Actually, that's a move that Tesla started to implement last year, and the first half of 2022, half of Tesla cars were using that chemistry, but back to Ford. Ford is going to be using CATL for a supplier, however, they also announced, quote, plans to localize and use 40 gigawatt hours of lithium iron phosphate capacity in North America starting in 2026. Now, along with that announcement, Ford also stated deals with mining companies to secure critical resources, including deals with Vale Canada, PT Vale, Indonesia, Huayu Cobalt, BHP, Liontown Resources, and Rio Tinto. Ford Motor Company is planning to cut as many as 8,000 jobs pertaining mostly to positions in the internal combustion engine division. The layoffs are said to help wean Ford off of internal combustion production and use those funds to further invest in EV development. According to the Bloomberg report, the cuts will take place in Ford's newly formed Blue Division, which is their, I suppose, legacy or internal combustion division that is separate from what they call the E Division, entirely focused on electric vehicles. That's really just Ford semantics, if you ask me. Currently, both combustion and EV models for Ford are unprofitable due to supply chain issues, hence the need for tightening up the belt. The job cuts are expected by Ford in the coming weeks, although the automaker has not yet confirmed any of the details. Ford is in the news again, this time trialing a robotic electric vehicle charging system. The charging station itself was custom-built by Dortmund University in Germany, where real-life testing took place after an initial trial. The design allows a driver to pull up and activate the station using their smartphone. This will activate the station's cover to slide open to make room for the robotic charging arm that extends towards the EV inlet and connects using a tiny camera. The driver can then wait in the car or exit and track the progress from their Ford Pass app. When charging is complete, the arm will retract on its own and close up. This is actually made with the intent of drivers who are less mobile. This is undoubtedly reminiscent of a similar device that Tesla was working on some years ago. As recently as 18 months ago, they said they were still developing it, and they called it a charging solid snake arm, 
which got its name from the popular video game Metal Gear Solid. This is Snake. Do I still have time? In today's community comment found on YouTube, a channel called Single Speed says, I have been waiting for Tesla to address the low-cost market for a long time. They are either uninterested or don't know how to. If they ever have to merge with another company to survive, this will be the reason why. Well, single speed, I think that Tesla isn't pursuing a cheap EV market because there isn't much money in it, at least for the time being. Tesla is putting a great deal of investment into producing vehicles at volume scale, which is a prerequisite for turning out a profit with a cheaper model. But one thing I am curious about, and I might upset a few Tesla fans by saying this, when Tesla does make a cheap electric car, which is indeed in their long-term plans, I wonder what kind of interior and exterior quality control will be in the vehicle. For a long time, Tesla has been criticized for quality control, but if you want to see for yourself how they do, you can check out a YouTube channel called The Electric Man. The Electric Man independently checks on panel gaps and quality control on Tesla vehicles that are slated for delivery. When the cheap Tesla hits the market, I'll be curious to see his take. Thanks for watching Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great day.